Honorable Minister of Law and Justice, Shri Kiran Riju Ji, my fellow commissioners, Shri Rajiv Kumar Ji and Shri Anup Chandra Pandey Ji, Honorable former Chief Election Commissioner, Shri Naveen Chawla Ji, Honorable Shri Sunil Arora Ji, <coughs> Shri Umesh Sinha, the, S, the, the Secretary General and other colleagues from the Commission, Honorable Representatives of the political parties, friends and media, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, I wish to congratulate all the citizens of our country on the occasion of 12th National Voters' Day. On this day, Election Commission of India was founded a day prior to India becoming a republic. Right to vote is one of the most basic elements of democratic citizenship, both essential and universal. In many parts of the world, this right was achieved after a long and bitter struggle. India, however, chose a very different path. The right to vote was bestowed on every adult citizen of India at the same time as India won her freedom. For a newly independent country with the literacy rate of 18%, this was a truly radical move and a leap of faith by the framers of constitution. I quote the verse of Dr. Rajendra Prashad, quote, some people have doubted the wisdom of adult franchise Personally, although I took upon it as an experiment, the result of which no one will be able to forecast today, I am not dismayed by it. I am a man of the village. And although I have had a life in cities for a pretty long time, on account of my birth, my roots are still there. I therefore know the village people who will constitute the bulk of this vast electorate. In my opinion, our pupil possesses intelligence and common sense. They also have a culture which the sophisticated people of today may not appreciate, but which is solid." Unquote. Dr. Ajandu Prashad, President, Constituent Assembly, 26 November 1949. This year we are celebrating 75th year of India's independence. It is time to look back and see how, against all odds, India emerged as a strong and robust democracy. It is time to pay tribute to the millions of voters who are the very sinews of our democratic framework. I believe that every poll day when citizens queue up at the polling stations to cast their vote is a voter's day in itself. Election Commission of India proudly dedicates the National Voter's Day to each and every voter of India. <clears throat> the theme for this year's NVD is making elections inclusive, accessible, participative. This theme conveys that democracy in a meaningful only when there is an equal and free participation of all. These are humanistic ideals which cannot be seen in isolation. I recall the concluding remarks of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, who was also India's first law minister in the Constitution Assembly of November 25, 1949, quote, these principles of liberty, equality, and fraternity are not to be treated as separate items in a trinity. They form a union of trinity in the sense that to divorce one from the other is to defeat the very purpose of democracy. So this equal participation is one of the most important thing as far as the elections are concerned. <clears throat> Just to give an idea of the long journey we have traveled together with our voters on the path of democracy. When the first general elections were conducted in 1951, there were only 17.3 crore voters. During 2019 elections, the number of voters was around 91 crore. And today there are more than 95.3 crore voters, of which 49 crore are male voters and 46 crore are female voters. Among these registered voters, there are 1.92 crore senior citizens aged 80 plus, 81.39 lakh persons with disabilities, 19.24 lakh service voters, and 1.367 crore newly registered voters. Behind this big data, there are a number of human stories, stories of innovation, of grit and determination, of placing duty before self, or belief in the ballot whether it is polling team in Anjava, Arunachal Pradesh, which traveled in hilly terrain 300 miles, four days for one voter, 
or a team Zara, which was stranded after poll for 20 days due to bad weather, but they got the election conducted. On this NVD, I wish to express gratitude to all the field functionaries, booth level officers, security personnel, and members of CAPF. Without your support, we cannot conduct elections. In the last two years, many of the field functionaries and their families got infected with COVID, yet they returned to perform their duties and did not let the conduct of election suffer any disruptions. Election Commission of India has made tremendous efforts in two directions, one to increase and facilitate registration of voters, and second, making polling stations a space more conducive, comfortable, and accessible. Several initiatives have been taken to increase the participation of women, persons with disabilities, and senior citizens, which are core of the election process. This has been our focus area, and it has brought good results. The number of women voters during general elections 2019 was 43.85 crores, which has increased to more than 46 crore now. Due credit for this must be given to all our women folks, the women booth level officers who talk to the women folk in their own language and convince them to participate in elections. We also ensured that polling stations were located closer to habitation besides better facilities like separate toilets, crutches, etc. We also set up all women managed booths. In the current elections also which we are going to have, 1,620 such all women managed booths are being set up across the five states. This gave a sense of empowerment to the women who have been registered as a voter. <clears throat> ECI has made consistent efforts and has gone that extra mile to empower and facilitate the participation of senior citizens and persons with disabilities. Having coordinated with several departments, NGOs, and obtaining data from them, we have mapped more than 77 lakh persons with disability till now. ECI has streamlined various initiatives like ramps, wheelchair, and volunteer assistance, braille epic card, free transport to and from polling stations, priority voting, and provisions of assured minimum facilities at the polling stations. ECI's PWD app helps such voters to get enrolled and get access to special facilitation services. All polling stations are now situated on ground level, and this credit goes to Mr. Sunil Arora, who is sitting here as a former CEC, who ensured, in spite of all opposition from the field, that all polling stations should be on the ground floor. So, sir, this is your contribution, a special contribution, and one of the contribution to the commission. <clears throat> to spread the message of empowerment, PWD icons are appointed by the commission. In every election, we set up some booths that are exclusively managed by persons with disabilities. Continuing our resolve that no voter is left behind, Commission brought the polling booth to the doorstep of those who find it difficult to go to the polling booths to cast their vote by offering them the option of postal ballot. Virtually, we have brought the ECI at the doorstep of those persons who cannot cast their vote because of the age, disability, or COVID infections. This new facility is now offered to all voters aged 80 plus, persons with disabilities, and those who are COVID affected and quarantined. Friends, getting citizen to register is one thing. Getting them to the polling station is another important area. It needs a different strategy altogether. ECI has been constantly trying to improve the polling station environment by providing better infrastructure, provision of all facilities like electricity, drinking water, toilets, waiting area, ramps for PWDs, and place to sit for the elderly. Targeted interventions are undertaken through sweep in areas with low voter turnout in order to increase participation. The commission has identified the polling areas, the polling booths where the voter turnout is less. And we are trying through various measures, including the sweep interventions, that the persons can be motivated to cast their vote freely. They should come forward so that the voter turnout can be increased. Until and unless everybody participates in the voting process, until and unless the turnout is more, the democracy cannot be strengthened. <coughs> As you know, the sudden impact of COVID-19 presented an unprecedented situation before the Commission. We had to ensure the safety of both the vote and the voter. Amidst the pandemic, elections to six state assemblies 
besides many by elections were conducted with full health and safety measures in place world over there were apprehension that covid-19 would lead to low voter turnout however the determined indian voter with unflinching faith in democracy defied naysayers and skeptics and came out in large numbers to vote in all elections held during the pandemic i'll give you the turnout of the other states which went to the polls in pandemic the voter turnout in bihar was 59.7% which was more than the last elections assam 82.42% tamil nadu 73.63% kerala 76% west bengal 82% and puducherry 83% so this showed that the persons were not deterred the communication was proper that the polling booths are safe they were absolutely explained that all arrangements of the covid compliance behavior are there on the polling booths and i am very happy to say that the voters complied with all protocols and they came out in large numbers to cast their votes because of which the percentage is so high and in some of the states the women turned out was much more than the men turned out friends is equally essential to curb the influence of money and muscle power in elections a first should be made by society as a whole not only by the election commission but by the whole society as a whole that people with criminal antecedent are discouraged from participation for this commission has recently launched the know your candidate app which provides voters with information about candidates including their criminal antecedent to enable voters to make an informed choice ultimately it is a choice of voter but all data regarding the candidate is being provided by this app as well as by the various websites of the political parties and the website of the commission as far as inducement free elections are concerned that is one of the important both of the commission and for that various measures like appointing of the expenditure observers like curbing of the cash flows curbing of the liquor curbing of other types of you know that inducements which can influence the voters are being taken and very strict directions have been given to the field also to stop all these practices every year on nbd we also give nbd awards on various areas of election management to individuals and organizations who have rendered yeoman service in furthering the cause of democracy and elections in india this year too all such elections heroes have been felicitated just before now and i congratulate all such persons who have kept duty before the self and make all the voters proud and they have done really a tremendous job during this covid period and perform their duty very well i really congratulate all of you <clears throat> friends election process is underway in another five states of goa manipur punjab uttarakhand and uttar pradesh with 690 assembly constituencies 18.3 crore voters across 2.5 lakh polling stations commission has issued stringent guidelines to be followed by all political parties and candidates we have also emphasized upon increasing the pace of vaccination in all poll going states and all arrangements will be made to ensure that the election is absolutely safe i will definitely appreciate the work and the efforts of the political parties also in this regard that they have been avoiding the covid appropriate behavior during these elections and they are also becoming an example to others as to how the covid behavior should be followed properly and i need your full support for these ensuring elections which are coming in the next months only <clears throat> today the two books were launched and one was leap of faith i would like to mention here that this book the idea of this book was conceived again by sri sunil rawla ji who was the earlier cec as after completion of our all elections in the covid he thought that a book can be put in which the efforts of the persons who have done and uh, the work during covid should be highlighted and the leap of faith was also coined by him i i really am thankful to you for giving that particular name to this book <clears throat> once again i congratulate the voters of the country especially the new voters the women the senior citizens and pwds we cannot thank you enough whatever be the situation your unflinching faith in the eci and your belief in the democracy has been steadfast i am immensely grateful to honorable vice president of india 
for accepting our invitation as a chief guest at the National Voters Day, whose message will be, you know, uh, 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 played right now. I am thankful to Honorable Minister of Law and Justice, Sri Kiranji Yuji, for sparing his valuable time and joining the NBD celebrations. My thanks to all members of political parties for being here with us today. And I am really grateful to the former CECs uh, once again for being with the ECI family. I am thankful to the media who came in large number and <coughs> helped, the, helped us and to spread our message till the last mile, till the last voter of this country. Thank you so much to all of you. Jai Hind.